I'm the Key Biscayne Community Foundation's uh, Citizen Science Coordinator. Uh, this is our third lecture in our spring lecture series. Uh, today we have with us uh, Theo Long. She's the Executive Director for the Biscayne Nature Center. Uh, we're very lucky to have her come and talk to us about 50 years of environmental education on Key Biscayne. Uh, quick note, if you have a cell phone, please turn it to silent. Um, if you really need to take a call, uh, just go out in the hallway for that. And any Key Challenge students, make sure you sign in. I have a sign-up sheet in the back, um, the one that says Key Challenge, because there's another one that's for emails uh, for anybody that wants to be notified about uh, future lectures. And with that, I will hand it off to you, Leo. Okay, thank you. Uh, first, I would like to thank the Key Biscayne Community Foundation uh, for hosting these, this lecture series and actually starting the Citizen Scientist Program here on Key Biscayne. Truly remarkable work that they do, the water testing, just keeping everyone alert on what's going on, and educating some of these younger folks that are here tonight. So it's hard to believe that it's been 50 years since Mabel Miller, who was a Key Biscayne resident, and I don't know, and how many people in here knew Mabel? A few, fabulous. So hopefully, uh, you'll be, you'll, it'll bring you down memory lane of what Mabel did. But this is kind of the quote that's on the Biscayne Nature Center building right now, and Marjorie Stoneman Douglas uh, is, is quoted with it. But this is why Mabel and Marjorie started the Biscayne Nature Center. And it was called the Biscayne Nature Center from the very beginning. And when Marjorie turned 100, and being so involved in it, they honored her by putting her name in front of the Biscayne Nature Center. But when Mabel and Marjorie uh, went to forces to make this happen, this was the quote. And I'll read it, and maybe everyone, just take a moment and think about it. Whatever the universe is, I believe it is all one. And this fragile shoreline, with its mangroves, coastal hammocks, and ancient reef, is a precious part of very little that still survives of our unique environment. If you think about that, there were no condos, there were no houses, it was a barren uh, barrier island. And just two sentences on a barrier island, that was formed by shifting sands coming from North Carolina and up north hundreds and hundreds of years ago. So that's what makes a barrier island. And Joni Gilblank, who's here tonight, she has a beautiful exhibit about shifting sands. And that's how I always remember how Key Biscayne was formed. So keep that in your mind. It's a short little way of remembering it. And um, I think it's a good way. Here she is. God bless her, Mabel Miller in her glory. Remember, she always braided her hair, had two little pigtails, and any time you saw her, she had some living thing, whether it be a plant, uh, a marine creature, an ant, uh, a spider. She would come up to you, and she'd want to tell you all about it. All of you who knew her, is that not correct? Yeah, right. She was just a bundle of fun and she wanted everyone to learn everything about the environment because she just loved it so much. Behind her is a portrait of Marjorie so it's very ironic that we captured this picture many years ago and the two of them are in the in the frame together. Uh, Mabel used to go over and visit Marjorie and for those of you who knew Mar uh, Mabel her middle name, or her maiden name was Fentress, and when she would go over and visit Marjorie, uh, Marjorie would say, Fentress, tell me everything you've been doing, you know, and uh, when I would go over to visit Marjorie, I'd say, Mabel said, and she goes, who's Mabel, you know, and I'd say, Fentress, oh, Fentress, yes, I was, I, yeah, tell me what she's been up to, so uh, they go back, way back, apparently, um, probably before Jay, who is uh, Mabel's husband. So here's Mabel uh, behind where the Nature Center is now. Um, and again, out exploring. 
And Mabel was an elementary school teacher at Kenlock Park Elementary, which is out by the airport, uh, Flagler Street and Lejeune Road. And she had a co-worker, Charlie Morrison, and the two of them decided that it was very hard to teach science and nature in the classroom. And Mabel lived out here on Key Biscayne, and this is back in 1969. So 50 years from today. That's a long time ago. And uh, we all know that 50 years ago, Key Biscayne looked a lot different, right? So Mabel, the wilderness um, could have been on any particular corner. It didn't have to be behind the nature center. Mabel went to Marjorie and said, what do you think of this idea that we put kids on a bus and we bring them over to Crandon Park and because uh, Mabel was familiar with Crandon Park, and we, we let them smell it and touch it. And we can, you know, walk through the hammock, and they could get their feet wet, and then we could walk to the mangroves. You know, she would, there would be no going home uh, once Mabel had you walking, uh, which we, if you ever went on a walk with Mabel, it, until it got dark, she wasn't calling it quits. Marjorie thought it was a good idea. And they went to the school system and they said, let us do this as a summer project. And the school system said, no, we have no money. And Mabel said, well, we don't want any money. We just want to do it. We're going to get a couple of kids and we're going to test to see how it works. And the school system said no. And it went back and forth. Finally, they allowed them to do it. And it went for like a six-week summer camp. And so. Her little project of taking children out to Cranham Park started the summer of 1969. And it stayed a summer program for two years. So in 1971, Mabel and Charlie were just having a, a heyday with you know, what to do with the kids and what, what should we show them next. So it was really quite, a, um, quite a, an exciting program for the kids that they went back to the school system and asked, could we make it a year-round program? So their dream was to have every sixth grade student in all of Dade County come out to their program and learn about what's in their own backyard. The, uh, Marjorie thought it was so important that the children <coughs> are the next generation, and if we don't teach them or help them understand about the environment, there'll be nothing left. So that's kind of the premise behind it. She also thought that if they did touch it, smell it, feel it, you didn't have to say anything. They could just walk the trails, they could walk with their feet in the water, and uh, they would just love it instantly. The other thing is, a lot of us don't take for granted, is that so many children in Miami-Dade County don't even know the ocean is in Miami. They live in Liberty City, uh, Overtown, which is less than five miles from here. And we have the children come now. This happening in 2019. When they come over the Key Biscayne Bridge, they're like, oh. I love riding the bus just to hear the kids, the awe in their, and in their voices. So what you and I take for granted, just average Miami-Dade County uh, residents never come over and see the beach and the, and the beach. I always ask, so what two bodies of water have you seen today? And they say the Atlantic and the Pacific. <laughs> so here's another picture of Mabel uh, with the students dragging the nets in the, yeah. They, never heard of this game day, but they, they, they think they've, uh... So we're still doing the same program where we drag the nets in the seagrass beds and we capture starfish, pufferfish, crabs, shrimp. We look at them, learn how, what role they play in the ecosystem, and then we release them. So it's basically a catch and release program. And when Mabel started the program, it began, they gave her a little storage area in the kayak concession stand. Back then, 50 years ago, they were selling hot dogs and hamburgers back there. And she put two fish tanks 
And we collect some of these and we keep them in the aquarium so that uh, other children who don't get to go on the hands-on program could see them another time and we rotate them in and out. So Mabel had two, two, three fish tanks in the back side of the hot dog stand, but they were still doing the same uh, catch and release program. After they turned it into a year-round program, they had the dream, like I said, that every fifth grade student would come through this program and learn about what's in their backyard. And Marjorie Stoneman Douglas was friends with Trick Russell, and you see the top picture up there. They were going to have three clamshell classrooms so that three groups of children could come every day, and they did the mathematics, and that would have allowed all of Dyke County to come to uh, the program. What I loved here, the center will help the island assume an important role in the study of our barrier island environment. So these were, this is what was in the Islander News way back in 1969. Here she is again. Uh, she's pin pointing out different uh, dune foliage and she's calling it a special place. Why it's in Brandon Park and not in Mathis and Hammock Park or some other park in Day County is we have all of the ecosystems there. So we have the dune system, we have the seagrass beds, we have the coastal hardwood hammock, and we have the mangroves. We do have the fossilized reef, which is not a local ecosystem, but that's another special treat that we have at the north end. And basically the only thing we were missing were the pineland rockland. Um, when we built the new building, we put a few pine trees by the, by the center. Um, and you all know that when Hurricane Andrew came, it took away all the Australian pines. So um, that isn't really what you call a, a, a pineland rockland. <laughs> so anyway, so here's the beginning way back when. Um, the fellow with the striped socks is Charlie Morrison, I think. And the children, again, they put life jackets on, they got nets and buckets, and they're off to do an exploration. So you'll see pictures later on. Looks identical today, not much has changed. And it's very hard to believe that in 50 years you can still be doing the same program, but it's still something new to new customers. So, you know, we really didn't have to change the program. And you have to give Mabel credit that they designed such a fabulous program for the mangroves, for the seagrass beds, and for the hardwood hammock that it's just a jewel and uh, people are still enjoying it today. So then, you know, they were in the hot dog stand for quite a few years. And then they got the bright idea to move over to Key Biscayne Elementary School. So the children left their school, went to Key Biscayne Elementary School, then they got back on the bus and went to Crandon Park, and then went back to the Key Biscayne, and then they went to, it was like a logistic nightmare. So Marjorie and Mabel, they got a portable classroom delivered there. And anytime Mabel needed anything, she dressed up Marjorie and brought her down to the school board yeah. and uh, Marjorie stood there with her stern voice and said this is what we need for the children and the future of Miami Dade. It also helped for the county side that she was good friends with um, Hardy Matheson who was a Dade County Commissioner at the time. So Marjorie had all the connections and Mabel had all the bright ideas. So they were, they were the, the magic duo of how to get things done. So this portable trailer um, was delivered. Remember, instead of adding on to schools with real buildings, I know when my boys were little, they just brought in 47 portables with air conditioning and um, that was meant to be sufficient. <laughs> I don't know who came up with that idea. But anyway, so this trailer was delivered in 1985. Now at that time, Marjorie was 95 years old. 
I don't know how old Mabel was, I didn't do the math, but um, Mabel was probably in her 50s or something like that at that time. And uh, Marjorie said, Mabel, I can't do this much longer. How long do you think, you know, I'm not going to live forever. So Marjorie went home with the idea, I'm going to start a not-for-profit group because you need the community behind this project. I can't be one person standing in the, uh, in the, the microphone, whether it be at the county, the school level, the state level, whatever. So Marjorie went home and she formed the not-for-profit group called the Biscayne Nature Center. So that's how the name got, and she got 10 of her best friends, her dentist, her lawyer, Betty, I think <laughs> Betty said, um, or I was on, I don't think you were on the original board, no, but, but Betty was on the board when, um, and uh, so with that, they decided they now need a permanent building. They now have their own building, but they need a permanent building, and that's when they actually um, got uh, Trip Russell, who is a local architect and a friend of Marjorie, to uh, come up with the plan. And here it is, you can see that's 1986, Progress on the Nature Center, and by uh, Linda Thornton, remember when she used to write for the Islander News. So anyway, um, so now they had big ideas. They're now partners with the school system and the county. And now they brought in a third partner, which is the not-for-profit group. And when they did that, apparently um, there is a big grant from Tallahassee that you can apply for called PICO Funds. And that's called Public Education Community Outlay. So you have to have the public, and you have to have the community, meaning um, you know, a not-for-profit that's uh, not a legislative, you know, is not a uh, an elected body of organization. They applied for the funding, and they got 1.8 million dollars, and it was wow, you know. Can you imagine the two ladies? So, and this was the design that uh, they they had submitted at the time. So they predicted it would cost four million dollars to build this. Uh, you know, we didn't have showers or anything, so we used to have to stand the children in a line and just pose them down. <laughs> and there's Mabel up on the top uh, porch there. She she's orchestrating the hose down. <laughs> but I I mean, we were still doing this up until the year 2000 when the new building opened. We were keeping the life jackets in the closet of the 1947 bathroom and lots of times you would open the closet door and three rats would run, you know, out and you would duck. And we would hose the children down when they came back from the water. Here's some inner city kids. Look at them. They all have cameras. Uh, but certainly all interested in what they're seeing and what they're um, looking at. One has a sea urchin in his hand, and I, I can just imagine what they're, uh, what they're, but in amazement, right? They've got total attention. In 1976, those of you who lived on Key Biscayne, the county was thinking about putting a water theme park at the north end of Crandon Park, very close to the Bear Cut Bridge. And Mabel and Marjorie went to Tallahassee because uh, Marjorie always had the governor's office on quick dial next to her easy chair. She used to have one of those phones with the, with the buttons that were about two inches big, you remember those? And, um, and she would get the governor on the phone. So they had, because Mabel did not want the trees to be cut down, nor did Marjorie, and I'm sure many others didn't want them either. But in 1976, they had the 165 acres from the Nature Center all the way to the Bear Cut Bridge declared an environmental study area. So that put Bill Bird and Miami-Dade County out of business in the sense that they, did, they weren't able to put the water theme park. And it was also kind of a dumping ground, because at that time, I was dating my husband and would fly in and there were, every once in a while, there was like an old washing machine 
kind of like when you go up to Tennessee and you're on the roads and there's an old refrigerator or whatever. I'm sure some of you remember that. But so that cleaned up that whole area and has preserved it over all these years. And today, if you walk those trails, that's the little bike path that you're seeing there. Um, it's like going back in time. I, I tell the suggest that you all take the time to just go walk that. It's about a 20 minute walk one direction and a 20 minute walk back. Is it still designated the study area? I think so. It, yeah, the county had now calls it the Bear Cut Preserve. Okay. So you're not able to take anything out. Everything's to be left in its natural state is how they're, they're working it. And again, this is looking towards the village but a lot of greenery. In honor of the, the former coconut plantation, there's a lot of coconut. Uh, and here you're looking over the dune system to the old uh, lifeguard stations. Here is a man-made pond that's uh, behind the nature center. Here's the fossilized reef that I was talking about. And if you take that 20 minute walk that I was just mentioning, you'll get to see this at low tide. So kind of plan your trip because at high tide, it's underwater and you don't get to see it. Here's another uh, view of it. And there's lots of little fish and tidal pools and sea anemones and lots of things to look at down there. Here's the mangroves again, which is opposite the fossil reef. So when you take that walk on the bike path, you're gonna go right through the mangroves. So now you can see why you know, environmental education or what we can show people here on Key Biscayne. Um, there's an egg casing, sea star, a hermit crab. Uh-oh, now I have the pointer. There you go. Uh, we actually catch uh, little seahorses, pipefish, little uh, top hat. This is down at the fossil reef, so these are some of the fish that you'll see down at the fossil reef. The sea oats. So here's Marjorie. This is actually on site on her 100th birthday. Um, very tickled. She's there with Harvey Rubin, and they were doing a tree planting um, that basically in honor of like breaking ground after, look at her here with the little one. <laughs> yeah. uh, here she is with Sharon Richardson. And just delighted that, you know, the county has bought into this, the state has bought into it. Her little not-for-profit, um, uh, Bill Sadowski, who was, um, I think, the right-hand person to Lawton Childs, he, was, he became the first president of the Biscayne Nature Center. So we get the PICO funds, and we were talking about this earlier with, with Betty, and it's 1987, right? Marjorie starts the the nature center, the not for profit in '85 with Mabel. 1987. What comes along? The Lipton Tennis. And we're in a trailer, and our dear friend Bruce Matheson says there'll be no more building in the park. Not an ant hill. No building in the park. And we spent a year, and that's kind of when I got involved in the center, I spent a year in the back office of Crandon Park trying to negotiate with Bruce Matheson, which was not easy. <laughs> and um, Betty was around, and Mabel was also in, remember they were, gonna, they were cutting down all the trees in the median strip uh, to get ready for this new stadium. And that was a fight as well. And it's very ironic that uh, the tennis tournament started today, but up at uh, Hard Rock Stadium, or it started yesterday, or, and it got rained out. But anyway, um, so we got stopped dead in our tracks. We have $1.8 million, and Bruce is telling us, you're not going to build anything. No way, no how. Um, we're stopping it. And somehow, I don't know, I, I always joke with him, I said it was one stubborn Irishman to another. And we convinced him that, because he said, just go to Mast Academy. There's not going to be a school 
because he thought Mabel was a teacher, Charlie was a teacher, and there were six teachers. And we also had, anyone here know Marge Lundstrom? Remember, she used to lead the programs at the Nature Center, and she and her husband also lived on Kibis Game. But, uh, so we were able to win over uh, Bruce Matheson, to make a long story short, but he only wanted the building to be three times the trailer, because he said, you're already doing one group in the trailer, so if you wanted, if your, your other building that was the three clamshells was going to do all Dade County students, I'm only going to allow you to have three times the trailer. A trailer is 800 square feet, so eight threes are 2,400 square feet, and most of you all here live in bigger homes than 2,400 square feet, so it was quite tiny. But luckily, the county came in and helped us, and they, because over the years in dealing with Bruce, and they were like, no, we really want this to happen. So they came in and said, we want a visitor center in Cranham Park. And Bruce couldn't tell the county no, because basically it's county land now. And so they built half the wing of the nature center, and the, the laboratory classroom that you now visit is three times the trailer. <laughs> and now we have, as you all know, a beautiful complex. And just, uh, we're still fighting to get our signs back on the boulevard with the county. I think there's half of one now, um, but the rest. But again, just look at how beautiful it is. And I think Key Biscayne is really lucky to have this resource on Key Biscayne. At the Nature Center, we only talk about what's in your own backyard, which is all of Key Biscayne. So that's the idea of environmental education on Key Biscayne. Way back in 69, 50 years ago, there was still a lot of green space. There's Mabel at our grand opening again with uh, Dr. Parker. Uh, who would have thought that all green, that downtown Miami would just be buildings and buildings and buildings and buildings back in 1969 or 1985 or 76 when they declared the 165 acres. So this is our laboratory classroom. It looks a lot like the trailer. I didn't put any pictures of what the inside of the trailer looks like. This is the gateway to the, to the preserve. So we have four trails off the back of the building. These are kids now that come. We have 200 children a day. I meant to do the math, I don't know. Maybe you girls could do that for me. What is 200 children a day times 365 days times 50 years? And you come up with that number. But that's how many children have come to the Nature Center. <laughs> so, so children of all walks of life come and here, here they're exploring and just um, having a great time right here on the key. I, when I was raising the other, you know, the $1.8 million was a, was a matching grant. You had to match, it was 100% match. And when I went to the top 100 companies and the top private companies here in Miami-Dade County, I met a lot of students or grown men down on Brickell that, you know, were big, uh, uh, working for big companies. And when I, I had a little, uh, photo album, because again, this is before cell phones, before uh, laptops and um, all of that. And I would show them the pictures and they'd say, oh, I did that, that was the best field trip I was ever on. So believe it or not, the, the children remember it. We keep the group small so everyone um, gets undivided attention, gets to ask all the questions that you, they want to ask. Just a, a fabulous day, there you go. They're learning about plants, plant ID. Again, what's in your own backyard, you know? Um, they're, uh, they're bird watching, they're looking onto some fire bush. Uh, we have a program that they use portable cameras and capture 
uh, what they're seeing. Uh, during summer, we even do yoga with the kids. And again, they're outdoors. Um, sometimes we get a lot of children's um, a survey. We, we ask them, what did you like best? What didn't you like? What did, and so many of them said, I just like being outdoors. And some of us, you know, as older folks, we lived outdoors growing up as children. Here they're doing beating with uh, beating Judy. Judy Colson comes to the center, does art. Their interpretation of what they saw, they're, they're painting some aboriginal uh, art downstairs. Little one very proud of his fish that he, uh, yeah. So we branched out. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas was a writer, and we decided that Oh Miami comes to town every year in April. April is Poetry Month. And I don't know, one evening I got the bright idea. Why don't we team up with Oh Miami? Because Marjorie was a writer, and we teach some of the, her poetry to the children. So we came up with the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Biscayne Nature Center Annual Poetry Award. So it's going to be a perpetual trophy that will go on for years and years and years. And it's another, I think, feather in the cap for um, Key Biscayne, who is the fellow. Here's one of the students writing her poem. So they go out, they explore nature, and then they come back and write down their words. And it, it's, some of the poems are just unbelievable. We'll have to get them. We also brought in the, the arts. Nature and art kind of go hand in hand. So we do plein air painting with um, different instructors. Here's Jackie Roach. Uh, who's our teacher right at the moment for uh, the Tuesday art classes. And on inclement weather, here they're down by the cabanas. Um, they're just having a great time expressing themselves and enjoying nature. Here's an interesting story. Uh, Isabel Crome, her husband, the Crome Avenue down in Homestead is named after them and they came into Miami in the early 1900s uh, with um, Flagler and the railroad. And I got a call one day, and uh, her, she had passed away. And her son said, I would like to give you my mother's seashell collection. He said, but you have to come in a big truck. <laughs> and I was like, OK, a big truck. So my husband and I went. And she had over 200 cigar boxes, which you'll have to come to the center to see this. This is like looking at jewelry. But um, it sat at the Nature Center in all the old cardboard boxes. And just this past summer, we took it on as a project. And we went through all 200 of the boxes. And she found all of these shells in bear cut in like the 1947. So you, you must stop by and see this. She has the same species from tiny, tiny to as big as probably it could get. And people who stop by and see this tell me it's remarkable because half of these shells aren't on Key Biscayne any longer. And um, I'm very grateful that we were able to put the exhibit together. But again, another tribute to um, Key Biscayne and you know, part of your history. We, we also gave the, the exhibit room a little bit of a, a facelift, uh, but still have all the local fish for everyone to take a look at. There's some of our residents right now. And we try to identify everything for everyone. We have a lot of skulls and um, little animals for the kids to look at. We talk about sea turtles. There's the picture that you saw with uh, Mabel in front of it earlier. A little tribute to um, Marjorie. Here's some of Jackie Roach. We have um, six artists a year. This is our gallery and uh, exhibit room. Our little gift shop. And this summer we did a big landscaping project where 20 years ago we had planted three huge gumbo limbo trees, or many gumbo limbo trees, 
but we selected these three because they were close by. So we had flying trees, and all we did was root prune them, lift them up over uh, the row of plants that if we go back to the other, there were no plants there at all. So all of this foliage we replanted uh, 20 years ago, and we've made a garden within a garden. So another nice place to come and read a book or do your cross, uh, you know, your cross stitch. This is our courtyard where everyone, and we're going to close with uh, Mabel and Marjorie. A group of us ladies got together and we had Frida Shumi, a local um, sculptor. She made the sculpture of, of Marjorie and um, she basically donated her time uh, to do that. And uh, Marjorie, when she was alive, she, she wanted herself on the bench so that people could sit and, and talk to her. And uh, we were very lucky. This picture was taken at the Nature Center uh, again, our dear friend Bruce Matheson, when he heard that Marjorie's sculpture was going to arrive in, Cr in Crandon Park, he, told, he called me and said he was getting a court order and I had 24 hours to get Marjorie out of there, uh, which was very depressing. Uh, I was crying and then I called the committee, who were all friends of Biscayne Bay Yacht Club with him, and he didn't care, he was determined there will be no memorializing anyone in Crandon Park. So uh, I'm sad to say we will not be making a sculpture of Mabel, which would be very fun to do, but it can't be in Crandon Park. So <laughs> if anyone has another idea of where we could um, go. Because, you know, after Mabel retired from Dade County Public Schools, those of you know, she moved to Virginia Key. She was going to save Virginia Key. And she was going to, she teamed up with the city of Miami. She wrote them a little plant book. She had trails. She helped design trails. They've actually named one of the trails after her over there. There's a very nice plaque that says Mabel Fentress Miller. Uh, so she was gun-ho that Virginia Key. And on days when we have too many children at the Nature Center, we actually take them over to Virginia Key. Uh, so Mabel gave us a good idea. They also have the seagrass beds and the mangroves. Uh, a little bit different because again, the, uh, the garbage dump is over there. So we're not quite sure. And again, we have that big issue about the water quality right now of uh, Virginia Key, Key Biscayne, Miami Beach. So there's lots of things to get involved in. Um, and I guess the biggest thing that we're, we're trying to fight right at the moment is plastics at, at the, you know, everywhere. Uh, I brought a, a little, there was an article two days ago in the New York Times, 88 pounds of plastic found inside a dead whale. Imagine 88 pounds. You girls don't even weigh 88 pounds. So just imagine how much plastic that is. You know, um, so we really all need to get on the bandwagon about plastics. I myself, I, I live downtown along the river, and I shop at Publix, and I was just saying to a friend the other day, everything I buy is in some hard plastic container. I just came back from a trip in Australia and I bought some lovely little cotton bags that you could put your fruit in or your lettuces or any of that because all of this plastic, 88 pounds inside a whale or some of these fish that you're finding, the plastics never go away. And I know that people are tired of hearing that and please don't take away my plastic bags but we really need to be thinking about that. Um, it's going to harm all of us because it's going to go up the food chain. Just like the red tide over in the west coast, uh, the scientists were telling us first it killed the, you know, it killed manatees, mammals, fish. Then the birds started to die because what did the birds eat? The birds eat the fish, right? We eat the fish. So, you know, it'll eventually go up the, the chain and they'll find, I'm sure plastics is so carcinogenic, it's unbelievable. 
So you don't want to be eating those chemicals. So <clears throat> please stop by and visit us. We have, I'm not here to preach to you tonight. I just wanted to give you some happy, what a success story this was by a Key Biscayne resident uh, who happened to know Marjorie Stoneman Douglas and the two women together uh, did a great thing. And it's a, it's a huge success. So with that, I saw you had a question. That in the center of the kids, spend more time in the ocean and the beach or with the plants? Uh, I would say it's 50-50. Probably more time out in the ocean because everybody likes to be playing in the water. Sometimes when you're walking through the hammock, there's lots of bugs and mosquitoes. So we try to you know, keep everyone happy and not get them eaten alive. <laughs> Every month, in addition to school field trips, once a month we have a family seagrass adventure. So you can come with your friends and, and parents, and you can go out into the ocean and do the whole uh, adventure where you drag the nets and you catch usually juvenile marine creatures. You learn about them and release them. Uh, and if you wanted to do a hammock walk, you could also arrange that. But once a month, we do have a public program in the ocean. Right. We advertise that in the Islander News. So you just keep an eye on the calendar uh, in the back of the Islander News. And we do summer camp, we do the painting, we have lots going on. So check out our website, and in honor of Mabel, please come and walk the trail. If you don't do anything else, um, please walk the trail. You can become a member of the Nature Center, and all the membership money goes to bringing underprivileged children to the center. We, um, so we do give field trips, uh, during the year to inner city schools, uh, Title I schools predominantly. And then during the summer we get a grant uh, from the Michael Schultz um, Charitable Fund and we get matching funds from the, from the county. And we have one month of paying camp and then we have one month of scholarship camp and the, child, the inner city children just think they died and went to heaven. They could have thought they went to Fiji or someplace. For them to come 20 days over the bridge and spend from 9 to 5 with us going in the water, we teach them to swim, we teach them to snorkel, they do all of those art projects that you saw. They're just um, unbelievable uh, what they learn and, and they cry at the end. They said, we'll never come back. And that's so sad, you know, because we have to reach out to those communities and um, get them to be able to walk the trails and see nature and all of that. Um, I'll tell you a, a quick good story. We, there was a, a grant on resiliency. You know, how, how are we going to deal with the sea level rise and the floods and all of that? So we wrote a grant uh, to bring some children from Overtown. Overtown is one of the lowest low-lying areas and you know the bay will just flood all of Overtown under I-95. So we went to Gibson Charter School and we're doing a program with them where we met with them 16 times. We went to them to the school eight times to do a lesson about resiliency and sea level rise just so that they get familiar with it. They're fifth and sixth graders in their lifetime water is going to be in Overtown. And uh, we decided now to invite that particular school to our summer camp. So we've now had 16 lessons with these children, and now they're going to come and spend a month with us. And I myself, as an educator, I'm going to be tickled to follow these children and see what kind of an impact we have had on their lives. because. They're 10 and 11 years old now, and just to you know, keep in touch with them if I possibly can, uh, through I'm not sure how yet, I have to figure that out, but um, just to see how we've impacted their lives. And I think I've met a lot of people whose lives we've impacted since Mabel first started this in 1969, and I'm sure maybe some of you already know those people. So uh, with that, any other questions? Yeah. Where is the sculpture now? Oh, it's at Fairchild Tropical Gardens. Oh, I, I'm yeah. sorry that I forgot to say that. Okay. So after we couldn't keep it, 
Uh, we, we have it uh, on permanent loan to uh, Fairchild, and um, it's over near the Butterfly uh, Pavilion, and where you have lunch there, they have her sitting. So uh, you can go down there, and, and it, it, at least someone is seeing her, and someone is sitting next to her and being inspired. So better than it being in storage someplace. So we, we've sacrificed, and you know, where there's a will, there's a way, right? And Theo, I believe the young ladies have the answer to your Oh, how many question. children have come to the center? Yeah, tell me. Say it nice and loud. Oh, you don't know how to read the number? Okay, so it's 3,650 children. 3,050 years. That's, we, in grants we say over a million children right. have come so through the, the program. The but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I never, uh, yeah, and I, I want to, yeah. But we, we, we there's, uh, yeah, a few holidays in there that we're not. But anyway, it's a, it's a good number. Betty, yeah, Betty Sinhonroy uh, used to be on our board of directors for many, many years. Yeah, Betty, so in the beginning. Just for interest, how are you funded? Uh, through grants and donations. So the county uh, doesn't give us any money. In fact, we pay the county. Every dollar that we get, we have to give them 20%. Wow. So um, every month we write them a check. And that's also thanks to Bruce Matheson <laughs> and the master plan. He came up with that idea that anyone who's running a business, I mean, this is hardly a business, but um, you have to give, um, the twenty percent, but you're not a profit educational. <coughs> he, it does. Business. He's no, di no. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's I the, think we should take Marjorie to funeral. <laughs> 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 oh, <wow. laughs> yes. When did all of this start? Like, when did everything start? For this particular program, 1969. So that was 50 years ago. This coming summer. Yeah, and this lady here was a teacher, and she started the whole thing. It was her idea to bring children to Crandon Park. Have you ever come to the center? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> she doesn't know. Yeah, Jeremy. I have a question. I don't know whether you were going to be able to answer it or not, but do you realize what a grand tribute you have given tonight? To both Marjorie and to Mabel, both of whom, as you know, we do. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's a tribute to you because during this part of this 15 years, mm -hmm. you have done such a wonderful job. Oh, thank you. Marjorie was 85, uh, in 1987 she came to the Junior League meeting in Carl Gable's Congregational Church, I'll never forget, and she shuffled down the aisle, you know, and she got to the microphone and she said, ladies, I need your help. I want a nature center by the sea. And at that time, the league was doing, you know, the ballet on Miami Beach, and we were doing Black Tide Party, Miami Magic. So it was all these foo-foo things, and not really anything outdoors. And when Marjorie explained what the children would be doing, I was like, okay, I'm signing up for that. And that's how I got involved in it. So as a stay-at-home mother, as a junior league project, um, and just giving them ideas on how they could help uh, raise funds, and go out and tow the end of the line, I would drive my boys to school, and then go out to the center and help Marge Lundstrom, you know, hand out the nets and the life jackets and stuff like that. And uh, so, and I'm still there, and I think that was 1987. So anyway, yeah, it's been a long, a long haul, but an enjoyable one, and I invite you all to come and get involved with us, and it's an important thing to be involved in. And I have to say, I think Theo is probably one of the most underappreciated women <laughs> in this area because what she's done is amazing. I mean, she has to deal 
politically with the county, with the school board, yeah, and the state too. Yeah, we the the renovation we did was with the state. Yes. So she has to juggle all these enemy entities, and you know. <laughs> 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 and that was a slip. <laughs> summers uh, with Chief Press, so we teamed up with uh, the sister cities one, uh, two summers, uh, not necessarily in a row, I don't think, but anyway, um, yeah, good things are happening and can happen, so if you have any good ideas for us, give us a call or stop by. We need Mabel and Marjorie to deal with Ultra. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Marjorie had a had a great saying: when you know you're right, there's no need to compromise. So keep that keep that in mind. You know, she she fought for the Everglades and fought for the Everglades. And when people would tell her, "Oh, thank you for saving the Everglades," she would scream at them and say, "It's not saved yet." And uh, <laughs> she's right. <laughs> It's still not saved yet, so you can't you can't give up, and that's the um, that's the secret to success is not not giving in to compromise, and Myra will attest to that, right? With the ball playing fields, how many things have we been through? And <laughs> never ending, but we will succeed. If at first you fails, try try again. Right, and that's what we have to do. And. Thank you very much, Gio, for what you do to make this a special place. You make Miami a special place, and we would have a big, big void without you. Thank you for what oh, you do. Yeah. And Blanca Mesa sends you a big thank you. Yeah. <laughs> she just texted me. Oh, yeah. Where I was. Yeah, right. She was. She and Mabel became very, very good friends, friends, and Blanca worked on Virginia Key. I mean, you know, the story continued after Mabel saw that the Nature Center was up and running, she then was, Let, let's start one over there, you know? So. Now, are you all documenting anything to Old Trust, whether you have any impacts? 
Well, we are. We canceled all programming for the weekend because we figured no one could get to us. So that's our first impact that we canceled. Um, and then we'll see the impact to the environment like that's we're all right. talking about. Yeah. So perhaps the following week, all the fish are going to the Bahamas. Because <laughs> 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 they, <laughs> they, they can't handle the, the boom diddy boom diddy boom, boom, you know? We may want to put our galoshes on and all take, a, you know, go hiking in the Virginia Yeah, and document. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, you know, this. Right, I have, I don't know, you know, it's hard to predict what, what will, but just from all the, the metal that I see going up is unbelievable. Yeah, the staircases, they're going through an awful lot of trouble to make one, one concert happen. So, with that, well, thank you again for everyone for coming out. I hope I uh, entertained you for, for a, I was going to say Tuesday night. It's Thursday night. So, again, thank you, and please come visit us.